First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Hey, you back once again with Dr. Alain Bay. And today's show is going to be on African sciences in today's modern society. Um, let's get into the word Africa and basically let's break that down because there's been a lot of disinformation, misinformation from various scholars over the years in which that have stated that the word Africa is derived from a so-called Roman or white man, said a white man, Albion, by the name of Scipios Africanus. Now, when you go and really do the research in history, um, Africanus was not his actual portion or part of his name. It was a nickname in which that was given to him for the defeat of Hannibal. Okay? That's where that comes from. So that was never his name um, from the beginning of his birth. That was something which that he inherited because of the defeat of Hannibal. So Africa was actually named Africa prior to him receiving it. And in ancient Kemet, the word Afu, Ra, Ka. Afu means house, temple, body, flesh. Ra means sun, light, photonic energy. Ka means spirit or spiritual soul. And so therefore, When you're talking about the word Africa, you have to break it down or bring the words together because Afura um, is found on the walls of ancient Kemet. And, of course, we know the symbol of Ka or the two arms in which that um, looks similar to a football goal um, sign or the two hands held up into that particular position that symbolizes Ka which symbolizes the 90-degree perpendicular level within masonry in which that is talked about, raising from the dead. And, of course, when the soul, the spiritual soul, raises from out the body, um, you enter into, according to the Gnostics, into the new realm um, of reality, which actually is an apparent reality. Um, And the realm is basically called the plane of force. 
which is talking about the ethereal plane, and then of course into the astral plane, the mental plane, the causal plane, the spiritual plane, and the soul plane. And along with your physical body, they make seven planes of existence, or known as the seven heavens, based on the principles of the seven chakras or the seats of light. So when you read about that information within Islam about the night of um, El Maj, um by Prophet Muhammad going up into the seven heavens or the night of power as it is also referred to as is actually talking about him raising the Kundalini energy up along his spinal column to the seven seat. Hence he himself symbolizes that seat known as the last seal of the prophet in which that there are seven seals within the book of Injil, which is the book of Revelation. That's what that is all symbolic to. We know them with the ancient Kemet as the seven bodies, or the seven souls of Ra, or the seven um, cows of Het Heru, or the seven lions of the Aritu, or known as the Aritu. Within Hebrew is the seven Elohim called the seven eyes of um, within Islam or Sufism, the seven eyes of Allah. So all of this is shown over and over again with this um, number seven symbolic to the signs of God. Um, so when you look up the word Africa, um, that is actually what you're dealing with is that is the actual origin of the name derived from out of the context of Moors or Kushite Moors, also referred to as Maru, the people, the Tanasi, the Tassetians, were used by them. Talking about the physical body being the house of God. Same concept in which that is within 1 Corinthians 12 chapter where it speaks about do you not know that your body is the temple of God? Same concept. So, this is where the word Africa actually comes from. So when you're talking about African sciences, we know that Africans were the first to bring science to the world, civilization in particular. And what does civilization deals with? Civilization deals with the fact of being civilized. And civilized goes into your behavior, your deeds, your ways, your actions, your be, um, your mores, your folk ways. And really what it deals with is the conquering of your lower nature and merging your lower nature into your higher self or your lower self into your higher self or your lower mind into your higher mind, however you want to refer to it as. Within the justice lesson, one of um, one through 14 of the Lord's found um, teachings of the nation Islam, for the Lord's found lesson of the nation of Islam, it states, "Why must Muhammad or any Muslim murder the devil? What is the duty of the Muslim of a um of my um of a Muslim in regards to the four devils? The four devils symbolizes the four lower chakras: the heart chakra, the solar plexus." the navel chakra, and the root chakra, known as the base chakra. Those are the four devils. And its attributes is less greed, jealousy, and envy. Symbolized by set, or that setian behavior, in which that humanity has, in which that destroys civilization. Matter of fact, those attributes are what plague civilizations in which that caused the downfall 
of civilization every time civilization is built. The three higher chakras, known as the Holy Trinity, the Word made flesh, which is resonance to the throat chakra, the third eye, in between the eyebrows, and the crown chakra, the top of the head. So hence, the throat symbolizes the sun, the third eye symbolizes the mother, and the crown symbolizes the father. And the mother, of course, is, quote, unquote, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. We're talking about symbolism here because it's an allegory, even if you use the Bible. If you say um, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, or if you extract Joseph and say God, Mary, and Jesus, It goes back to Osar Set and Heru. The most popular form of the Holy Trinity. And it symbolizes your immortal body. Your Aku, your Ka, and your Ba. The Aku means glorified light body. Symbolic to the throat chakra. The Ka symbolic to the third eye. And the Ba symbolic to the soul, which is the top of the head. This is what this is actually symbolic to. So when you are in those three higher chakras and you have merged your lower chakras, which is the power of the Kundalini, which is your sexual nature, and you've drawn those energies up, the spinal column, and you have rejuvenated yourself with the microcosmic orbit. In other words, you have actually taken that energy up and you've drawn it back down and brought it back up into a circular manner over and over again. Not only do you open up the channels of your meridians called your conceptual and governing vessel, you open up the other 12 meridians and which that is throughout your body and which that you have to develop in order to maintain health. But it also gives the ability in order to light your body up like a Christmas tree in a sense. And these are the same meridians and nodes, anadis, in which that in acupressure and acupuncture and reflexology is utilized in order to, um, to relieve pain pressure, um, negative sensations, sickness, disease, ailments, by pressing or piercing those particular zones. This is this African science. And of course, it has been spread throughout the diaspora because African consciousness have gone throughout the world. It did not just stay within Africa. It was brought into India by the Tamil people, who was known as the pre-Davidians. And the Tamil people actually was the followers of Atum Re, or Atum Ra. And they went into India, or what became known as Hindu Kush, actually. And they still have the Indo Kush mountains to this day. The word Indo means black. The word Kush means black. Indo means black within Sanskrit. And Kush means black within Ethiopic or Coptic. As well as also within Hebrew. Dark complected. What happened is, is that the so-called Caucasians from out the Caucasus Mountains came within the territory of India and began to mix with the Indian people. And their phenotypes began to change somewhat as far as the straightening of their hair. But there are still Tamil or Sutras, as they're now called, the untouchables in the mostly in the southern portions or regions of India, in which they still have woolly hair. Naib Baba um, is one of them, in which that you might have used his Nag Champa incense. 
And he'd been rocking, you know, he was, of course, he's passed on now, but he was rocking the Afro, shoot, since the 60s, until his death. And then, of course, that information, according to Ancient Future by Wayne Chandler, was taken from out of India by Bodhidharma into China amongst the Shaolin monks who taught them the 18th Lohan Qigong movement, in which that he seen when he went to the temples, they was falling asleep. So he began to teach them the exercises of movement, Qigong, Tai Chi, in which that became the basics of the 18 Lohan exercises. That's where the Qigong and Tai Chi originated from, from out of those, out of that particular system, in which that was taught by Bodhidharma. And of course, we know that in Japan, that ended up amongst the samurais, in which that is stated within various texts, one in particular, Sex and Race by Jay Rogers, another one by Indochemic Kush, what they never told you in history class, as well as his other one, The Missing Pages, in which that states specifically that in order to be a good samurai, you must have a little bit of black blood. In other words... That black blood, that melanin, they even knew then gave you the ability in order to have hypersensory nerves. In other words, a heightened motor system. You can do your research on this in African Origin of Biological Psychology by Dr. Rich King, as well as also Dr. Layla Africa and Nutrisides, in which that they break down how our nervous system is able to transmit electromagnetic pulses much more rapidly because of the melanin factor. The Omex, the descendants of the Dogon. The Dogons are the ancient Egyptians who was there in Egypt as the astrologers. Hence the story of the Magi, in which that is found within the Zoroastrian text because the Zoroastrians actually was descended from out of that priesthood. The Dogons also was descended from out of that priesthood, hence the origin of the Omak calendar, in which that came known as the Mayan calendar, became known as the Aztec calendar, became known as the Inca calendar, the Totec calendar, because they was the Omak's descendants. And you get Clyde Winter's information on the Dogon coming from out of um, the Mandis or the Mandingo um, tribes and being part of the Dogon lineage. And this is why they had one of the most perfect calendars in the world because they was the astrologers, part of the astrologers clan of the Dogon. And like we said, they was the original astrologers in ancient Kemet in which that dated back over 8,000 years ago, or 6,000 B.C. However, the Dogon left because they knew the prophecies of the coming of disaster. In other words, they knew of the coming invasions, and they knew of the coming experiments in which that was going to be practiced by the ancient Egyptians by way of the Atlanteans in which that they would begin to experiment genetically and begin to make mankind after their image and after their likeness. As a matter of fact, you get the book by um, Sir Walter Scott, Hermetica. He states that in there that the Egyptians said that the worst thing that we've ever done was create man in our image and after our likeness. Of course, this sounded the same phrase on which that was mentioned within Genesis 2. In which that supposedly Adam was made after the image and after the likeness of God in Genesis 1. This is what all this is actually referring to. Of 
course, we're using the Bible. It's not historical, but it does give references to the information that we're talking about. And they do have some historical names mentioned in the Bible, but not to get caught up into the allegorical tales and the mythical tales in which that is being um, weaved together, in which that are allegories, metaphors for morality, for spiritual enlightenment. We know that the Africans brought mathematics. The oldest text or the oldest papyrus in which that has been found is called the Rhine Papyrus or Papyra. Or pap- the Rhine Papyrus or Papyra in which that shows mathematics in which that dates back over 4,000 years ago. Mathematics such as Trigonometry, geometry, calculus, algebra. Everything which that we use now was used then. As a matter of fact, the symbol of pi is actually found. The golden mean ratio. All of this information which that was used in order to build the pyramid. All of this information is there. And the amazing thing is they don't get credit for it. They attempt to give the credit to the ancient Egyptians' descendants who are the Moors or the Arabs later on in history in which that they say that algebra comes from algebra which was the rock in which that, um, the Gibraltar rock in which that um, was found, um, in which that, that was all symbolic, um, in a sense. But algebra is the name, I should say, in which that is the origin. Of, that's when they begin to refer to it as algebra is from Islam. It is an Islamic or an Arabic word. And it's supposed to come from the mountain called Al Jabbar, in which that was um, derived from the man in which that actually found that mountain or area, territory, allegedly. And I say allegedly because, like I said, we have the Orion Papyrus, which that is also um, it is held within the British Museum. And you might be able to even find copies online in PDF. R H I N E, Orion Papyrus. So check that out. So they brought all the mathematics, the formulas. In other words, the words made flesh. The word made flesh, as me and a brother were speaking on just yesterday. Matter of fact, Brother Wednesday, he was breaking down about the word made flesh. Is actually talking about mathematical formulas. Because everything is based on mathematics. Speech itself is based on mathematics. Because it's based on syllables, words, pronunciation, frequency, modes, patterns, schemes, all mathematics. And if you can find the right frequency, pattern, or scheme within a word, you can gain power over it. And by proper pronunciation, you can make that word be utilized the way in which that you need for it to be. Based on your intentions, based on your emotional intentions, based on the thought frequency and power of that thought will equal manifestation. You know that the African bought both the science of government. 
we think of just a, a monarchy government with a emperor, a empress, or king and queen, or pharaoh or pharaohs, originally known as Nagua Naga, in which that within Ethiopia or Kush becomes the Nega Nagus. King of Kings, in which that is the same title in which that supposedly was put over the head of Jesus on the cross. That same title was um, utilized by the kings of Ethiopia for thousands, hundreds and thousands of years before the allegory of Jesus and the making of the Jesus creature known as Serapis by 325 AD by Constantine and his 318 bishops. The government goes into the science of law. What law do the Africans have. The government goes beyond just the monarchy, as we said. They did not utilize a so-called democracy or a republic in that sense. But throughout history, there's been various forms of each of these governments utilized as you can read within the laws of nations. Some have used ecclesiastical law, which ecclesiastical law is actually laws coming from out and stemming from the Coptic Moors or Cushites. And which had actually overseen the Vatican at one time. And the word Catholic supposedly means within Latin, universal, but it is also talking about catholic, which means the holy cat, which is actually the symbol or image of Herm or Cat, which is the Sphinx, who was known as the initiator within the, the Hakka system which are the teachings of Tahuti. So they was the initi- so he was initiated into the ancient mystery school. And of course, the individual will have to stand in front of the palate in between the paws of the Sphinx, Herod Cat. And Herod Cat would be played by a priest. A priest of Amen Ra. In which that would ask three questions. One of the questions often asked and often told is what crawls on four, then on two, then on three. And of course the answer is man. Initiations with ceremonies and rituals in order to help man understand the enlightenment process at a much quicker rate than just life experiences. Even though life experiences happen, it's not structured. So the initiation was based on the structuring of the life experiences in order to get man to think in a higher nature and to merge his lower nature into his higher nature. Because the higher nature is mayat, which deals with the science of law, the balance of life. Tahuti had seven principles, who's the consort of mayat. Tahuti principles was mentalism or is mentalism. 
which means dealing with the science of the mind, mind over matter, polarity, meaning two extremes of the same pole. So whether you call it Lucifer or Christ or devil or God, it's the same pole. Rhythm, vibration, both of those deals with frequency, modes, schemes, as we said earlier, mathematics, gender, sex, everything is male and female, yin and yang, shu and tefnut, or saw a set. Masculine, feminine, positive, negative, electrical, magnetic. All right. So we have the law of correspondence as above, so below. As within, so without. And we also have the law of cause and effect, which is karma, which is basically you reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. Doing to others as others will have them to do unto you. These are the seven principles of Tahuti. These are the universal principles. These principles correlate to truth, in which that truth cannot be changed. Facts can be changed or altered, but truth cannot. The truth of the matter is. The earth always spins around the sun and the solar system through the 12 zodiac signs and that the earth is round. That's the truth. However, 400 years ago, the fact was they thought the earth was flat. Europeans did, that is, because over 90% of them was illiterate at the time. All right? Now, his consort, his wife, Mayat. Now, of course, understand that there's their allegories. Tahuti symbolizes wisdom. And within your human body, He's talking about the Medulla Omnigata. Tahuti's symbol is a baboon, which is an ape or a monkey species. Within Hebrew, you have the letter go, in which that means monkey, back of the head, skull, act. Copy. All of this is at the back of the head. So the monkey copy symbolizes that monkey see, monkey do. When you're around a monkey, they will actually imitate you and do what you do. That symbolizes a form of copying or what is known as memory. As you breathe in and out, using Shu and Tefnut, the breath of life, your memories are in, are sketched or in or, um yeah sketched onto your breath of life. If you stop breathing, no more memories. Not in the physical body. Outside the physical body, that's something else. So. The back of the head symbolizes the place where memory is stored. 
your photographic memory, your past lives. All of that is stored at the back of the head, at the Madula Amagata, which is symbolic to Tahuti. That's where you access your Akashi records or your universal library. In other words, your past lives deal with right and wrong as your perception is and what it has been throughout your various lives. If you had access to that, then you would know what to do within given situations because this is sometimes why you have deja vu experiences. Because you are correlating or relating to a past life event in which that occurred, in which that was somewhat the same as this particular time in this particular life experience. But as we said, Tahuti had his consort or his wife in which that is Mayat. And Mayat also has seven principles known as the cardinal or virtues, cardinal virtues. And of course, her principles are truth, as we just finished going over, righteousness, order, balance, harmony, reciprocity, All right? As well as also love. And some say freedom. Because the wing symbolizes freedom. But these seven principles in which that you would see um, various people translate, whether it's um, EA. Wallace Budge or others is sometimes altered with different English words in which that um, somewhat means the same thing. But regardless, it was seven principles. Five of the principles are left within love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice within the more Science Temple of America or the Moorish Holy Temple of Science slash Moorish Divine National Movement of the world in these days and time. But a lot of the Moors don't understand the true principles and don't understand that it is connected to um, ancient Egypt as Prophet Nubadra Ali told us that he was a universal prophet and that he also was an Egyptian adept. But these particular 14, seven universal principles and seven cardinal virtues are the, like the 14 pieces of Osar, which is Osiris, symbolically. This is where some of this information is derived from. You can get also Tahuti's um, Emerald Tablets. They say originally he had 42 books. Also his wife is said within the coffin text to have um, 42 gods or netters. Next rules or nature rules. So you talk about universal law, the first law, which is dealing with cosmology, astrology, the influences of the stars, the planets, satellites comets, asteroids, meteorites, etc. upon the influence and destruction of the human body at the time of conception and at the time of birth. All of this played an influence upon the structuring of that child within the womb. So astrology, cosmology, 
is important, very important. As a matter of fact, an astrological birth chart is one of the first things in which that should be taught to a child as they come of age. But they can understand their strengths as well as also their weaknesses based on those particular alignments. Medical astrology in particular, so they can know what organs are fast to be depleted of energy if proper nutrition is not given. And what herbs can heal the body based on those astrological alignments? All of this is universal law. The book of Psalms, I think Psalms 18, 19 speaks about um, how the stars is God's handwriting. Well, if you understand that, then you would know that if the stars is God's handwriting, then that means you must learn how to read the script. You must pay attention. I know that you've been spooked out in Christianity and Islam, Judaism, with them telling you don't study it, but yet the Gnostics of Christianity study it, yet the Sufis of Islam study it, yet the Kabbalists of Judaism study it. All the occult, esoteric schools study it, but the exoteric, the outer surface, dwellers cast some pearls upon swine they don't study it and they wonder why the earth is in the dilemma that is in that's universal law universal law correlates to natural law dealing with the 99 elements on the periodical chart in particular in which that is composed of your physical body as it correlates to the 99 attributes of a law. That's natural law. Dealing with the examination of the physical body and knowing the various parts and organs and interesting glands of the physical body. Natural law. How certain substances reacts to the physical body. That's natural law. The foods in which that you eat, the water that you drink, the plants, whether it's land or sea, the effects in which that it has upon the physical body, that's natural law. In other words, that's know thyself, in which that is written all over the walls in ancient Kemet, or Tamare, or Egypt, as it is now referred to as. So that's dealing with natural law. You must master all these things also. So you must master universal law, natural law. Natural law go in, coincide with common sense law, which is known as common law. When people come together, it becomes constitutional law. But universal law, natural law, common sense law, common law, constitutional law is not colorable law. Is not legal. Is not de facto. Is not man made law. Man has made laws to restrict other men. In which that, based on universal law, natural law, common sense law, should not and have not any effect upon any other man. In other words, with the designing of government came forth man-made law. 
and now the government has enslaved the people. And some say the way in order to change the government is from the inside. Some say the way to change it is from the outside. I think these experiments have been played long enough within um, on the planet for hundreds of years. We go back and examine the fall of Egypt, the fall of Greece, the fall of Rome, the fall of Britain, and soon the fall of America with this economic collapse in which that is bound to happen. Because trading paper for paper isn't going to work. The money must be backed by something of substance. And it's called money because of the word moon mean. It's based on the energies of the moon. The element for the moon is silver. For the sun is gold. That's currency or currents. So money to keep flowing must be backed by something of substance, which is gold or silver, gold and silver. If not, the economics is bound to collapse. And this is what has been spoken of. So all those in which they've been talking about the fall of Babylon may have well begin ready to see that take place. Because it's not backed by what? Universal, natural, or common sense law. Constitutional law. Even the Constitution states that Congress is supposed to print coins, coinage. In other words, silver and gold. Meaning that it should be backed by something of substance, even according to the Constitution. I think it's Article 10. Article 2, Section 10, something like that, if I'm not mistaken. So, we must come to some overstanding, understanding, understanding of what is actually taking place. And the only way to do it is actually through the African sciences, because we are the ones in which that brought these sciences to the world. We have practiced all of these sciences over hundreds and thousands and millions of years. We bought the structure of family. Which deals with the science of polarity. Which deals with the science of correspondence. Which deals with the science of gender, which is sex. That's how you get civilization. Whether it starts out from a family, a clan, tribe, nation, or empire. It comes by way of man and woman. There's no other way in which that it comes. That's it. But of course, this society has this homosexual agenda plan, which is part of population control. And they have put that forth and postulated it. And it's now running rampant in the movies, TV, in society. And it's going to bring about the destruction of the civilization. And how we know? Because look at history. It was practiced in Egypt during the time in which that Egypt was falling. Same thing within Greece, same thing within Rome. And pretty sure the same thing within Britain. And same here within the 
United States. And let me state this, is that the United States is of America. America is not of the United States. Meaning that one has a superior position. One has a nationality, one does not. Nationality is American. U.S. or United States citizen is not. What is that? That's a corporation. That's your name spelled in all caps. Referred to as the straw man, a straw person. And some don't want to deal with that, even as morals. They're coming up and concocting all types of um, nonsense scenarios. Saying that your name spelled in caps is not the straw man. Hmm. Well, that's not what Black's Law Dictionary says. So these are the things in which that you have to be beware of as we come back into the development of culture. Because culture is part of the system of law, part of the system of civilization. Culture deals with traditions, ceremonies, rituals. But the proper traditions, ceremonies, and rituals. It can't be the same nonsense in which they've been perpetrated for the last 400 years or so. Us believing in fictional characters. White Jesus. You can't form a culture of a white Jesus. You can't form a culture of a pale Muhammad. You can't form a culture off of Charleston Heston, Moses. You can't form a culture off of any of these allegorical, fictional characters. Why are they put there by African people is because they had a particular spiritual meaning within the storyline or plot. Whether it was morality or whether it was spirituality. But it wasn't for you to be taking it as historical and literal. Because it's an allegory. Galatians, the fourth chapter, the 24th through the 26th verse tells you that. Surah 3 of the Holy Quran. al Iram tell you that. That these are allegories. You look up the word allegory in Webster Dictionary, it means fictional characters. Fictional means that it did not exist. It means that it has an underlying spiritual meaning. That's what it means. So stop that shit. That's part of African sciences. Not to get caught up into these fictional characters of the Albion, European. Remember, that's what made you lose your nationality in the first place, was following after their gods. After their mythical characters that you could not explain any longer because you left your African traditions and sciences. Who was white Jesus? You know that was Caesar Bonnier from the 1500s, painted by Leonardo da Vinci. He was a homosexual. That's the that's the nonsense in which that we are propagating. You got to tell your people this before we can come back to an actual culture. You got to destroy that religious nonsense. Show them in the scriptures where God is within. Luke 17, 21. Where Jesus supposedly said um, that the kingdom of God is within you. First Corinthians three sixteen. Do you not know that your body is the temple of God? 
and many other scriptures. Psalms 82, 1, God judged amongst the, God, amongst the counsel of the gods. Verse 6, do you not know that ye are gods, but you will fall like men? John um, um, 1034, where Jesus said, do you not know that ye are gods? And if these scriptures say that ye are gods, then who am I in order to change them? So this is the science. You have to bring them back into, that's the culture. That's African science. That's what is known as know thyself and die by knowing thyself. You will know God in the universe. Which is plastered all over the temple walls in ancient, in, um, in, in Egypt today. That's African science. And even our characters within, um, the, off the walls of ancient Egypt was allegorical. They symbolized certain components of your physical body or aspects of nature. Hence the reason why they was called nature or nature. Nature. So it was part of the natural law. As your body is part of natural law, while your soul is universal, it shows the correlations between all of it, the soul and the physical, the mind and the body. All right. All right, we getting ready to bring my co-host on, Brother L. Are you here? Yes, sir. Brother, peace. Uh, uh, peace, peace y'all. All you good moors out there. All right, all right. How you doing tonight? Uh, fine, brother. How the brother doing? Doing well. Yes, sir, brother. Uh, I was listening to what you were saying about the a lot of misconceptions about the word Africa, right. and the uh, certain scholars were saying that it was. Africa was named after the Roman general. Right. A European named Scipio Africanus. Right. But found out what you just said that it, that was his nickname was given to him after the uh the fall of Hannibal. Exactly. Okay. So that would mean uh, that that would mean that the nickname existed before um um that the name existed before it was given to him as a nickname. Okay. <laughs> and then when we can go back and see on the wars of Africa that the word Afra is right there on the wall, and as well as the word Ka, then we know that the word Africa, you know what I'm saying, will have to be the word African, or Africa, you know, is because it's right there on the walls of ancient Egypt, in hieroglyphics, in Metunetan. Okay, so... How can so we say, right, so how can we say that um, that word was given um, to to um, um, to him at birth, and we was named the continent Africa after him? When okay, the word so, is being high, we know that they didn't speak hieroglyphics. They didn't speak no metuneta. He was a so Roman. Mm -hmm. So that means he spoke Latin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, exactly. You know. So stop, right. So, so basically it's time for us to stop the bullshit. Okay. And get the facts straight so that we can uh, move forward with a actual culture. Because these are the things in which that keeps us from having a culture. It's us having to continue debating stupid ass subjects over and over again. Okay. So, uh, uh, what about how that goes as far as, you know, like, uh, uh, when you want to try to process your affidavits and court, uh, like your nationality and, birth and, and papers through the courts and uh, through the records, uh, uh, county records of deeds. Right. But you, but you still say Moorish American, right? Well, see, the word Moorish is an adjective because the ish transformed the word more, which was a proper noun, into an adjective. Because okay. ish is an adjective. So when okay. you say Moorish American, the only word in which that defines a nationality in Moorish American is actually the word American, not Moorish. Okay. Because Moorish has not been transformed into into an adjective. Oh, okay. Because the word Moorish means to be like a Moor. Okay. Or to be relate or related you know, by nationality to a more. In other words, to be descended from a more. Okay. 
Okay, so you just that's not you just put just more. Um, the word more is a proper noun, yes. Okay. The word American is a proper noun, yes. Okay, I got you. Because I, I, I've been, I, I've been, doing, I've been doing it kind of wrong, really, when I've been putting Moorish American on certain documents. Well, you know. being that it's Moorish, you given is an adjective, but you're describing um, the word Moorish, or given the depiction of the word Moorish to that of the word American, which is a nationality. Okay. To be an American is a nationality. Okay, which is Al, Al Moroccan, which is right. a corruption of the word Al Moroccan anyway. Which is Al Moroccan, right? Which is the same as the word more, in which that stems from it. So that's why I was saying that, um, um, in my book, that in a sense is the oxymoron because the word Moorish or the word more in America actually is derived from, from the same roots of the word Meru. Okay. Or Moro. Okay, so I'm, I, I guess I'll stop putting more on there. Just put more whenever I sign documents. Well, we just talking about as far as improper grammar, you know, and that's what we're going to get back to. You know, we want to get back to proper grammar. You know, if you're going to use um, English, then let's use it properly. You know, right. then we can um, take it back into um, its correlations within other languages. But we can't do that unless we know uh, where these um, particular words originate from, from these various um, languages and dialects around the world, because we know that's what English is. It's a hodgepodge of all the various languages, whether it's Latin, Greek, um, you know, um, English, you know, from um, from Britain, you know, um, Scottish, you know. I mean, it, it's, it's a hodgepodge of all of the so-called European languages, plus as well as also some African words, you know, um, is in there. The word guba, which means for peanut, is an African word. Yeah, I noticed my my, my uh, grandfather, peace be upon him. He uh, used to say uh, when they was he was growing up and in the South that he used to use called peanuts goobas. Right. And so they kept that word through the through the uh, uh, through the generations. Right, right. Through um, particularly the Gullah people, you know, um, who also um, kept that um, kept various words. Uh, from Africa, you know, um, in the dialects um, going, in which that is also found within Creole and different other um, dialects, you know, throughout the um, country. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, uh, like I told you before, I have a great uh, a picture, a portrait of my great-great-grandmother. She was a Choctaw. Right. Watch your talk. Uh, whenever I get a picture made, I'm definitely going to send you a picture. Okay. To show you what I'm talking about. Right. So I, 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 it kind of really surprised me how close, uh, how blood related I am, uh, an indigenous to this land. Oh yeah. You know, and I, I know that I was that close, but I am. You know. Exactly. So, there we go. Exactly. Exactly. It's not Moorish. It's not like a Moor. You are more. Oh, uh, more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I know it's on my nationality card. You get more. Right. You don't have, you don't have Moorish Americans. You have more. Right, right. A Washington more because no. Washington is your tribe, and more is your proper noun or which puts you back in proper persona. Okay. You know, if you go to court, you know you wouldn't use an adjective or a description of yourself. You would say who you are. I am. Okay. I am a more. I am a more. Okay. You know, but you can't say I am Moorish. Okay. Because you're describing, you what you gonna do? You 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 describing what? I am Moorish. What you describing? You're describing yourself as a Moor. You're like a Moor. So I am like a Moor. Okay. You see, or I'm related to a Moor. Oh, okay, gotcha. In, in other words, it's like this. It's like what Prophet Muhammad Ali said too. Is that um, you are what you um. Uh, you know what you are, your father. You know your forefathers and foremothers. You know, and your descent name cannot be changed. Right. But I was know? going by the the, the the circle seven, and you know, right. uh, we, and, and uh, uh, Moorish literature, we were saying we are Moorish Americans. Right, but it also say that we're Moroccan. Right. And Moabite. Right. 
and it tells us all these various words. So what it was doing was giving us all these particular words throughout um, um, the language, throughout the English language, so that we can actually go and do the research and tie ourselves back together properly. So you have the word Moroccan, you have the word Moorish, you have the word Moor, you have the word um, Moabite, and all of these words are within um, the 101 or 102. Right. Question is, why is all these various words, you know, it is, you know, why are all these various words used? Okay. They all, they all derive from the same source. So what we're doing is simply trying to go back to the source in which that these words derive from. And that's what we all need to be doing is trying to find the source of these particular words. Because we all know that they are interrelated and interconnected. But it has to be in the proper noun. It can't be in, which is a person, place, or thing. It can't be a description. That means it becomes no better than the word black, negro, or colored, which are nothing okay. but adjectives. Those are descriptions. Okay. I got a black computer, but I don't say hand me the black. I say hand me the computer. Exactly. <laughs> so that exactly. means that so that means that that's the reason why we call second class citizens, because we have taken on these particular um attributes, Negro blacks and colors, in which that is secondary in characteristics. Okay. The computer the computer is primary. That's a noun. Because it's a person, place, a thing. Right. But the word black became irrelevant when I said computer, didn't it? It sure did. Even though the Most computer definitely. is, even though my computer is black, it became irrelevant. Because you wouldn't know what the hell I was talking about. I said, yo, hand me the black. Huh? Yeah, you're right. You would have been confused. Definitely. The black what? Right, black white. In other words, um, what? In other words, the noun. I need the noun up in there. That's why we was called black or more. Because the word black was to be give us as a description as more. Black or but more, when black, they took like the more, more. Right. But when they took the more part off and just left us with black, the description, then that was the flaw. Black or more is fine. Matter of fact, you look up black or more in the um, West Dictionary, that's a noun. So that's when the black um, um, part um, becomes a noun. Black or more is a noun. It's not an adjective. Any longer because the word or more or more is attached to it. Okay. Now we talk about dictionary um, language, and of course, people can say, Oh man, we're going by the white man again. Okay. Well, did a white man create language? I didn't know that. Hmm. I thought he just got here 6,000 years ago, and that got proved that we've been on the planet for 2.8 billion years. Mm-hmm. So, so he created a language? Was no, he English? didn't. Right. Was English actually spoken by the European before it was spoken by us? Nope. Because if I'm not mistaken, Sex and Race by Jay Rogers says that the um, first so-called, um, that the first um, people in England were blacks. This is also found in another book. Um, by, as a matter of fact, it's found in Ancient and Modern Britain by David Magritte, which Moors love to quote. As a matter of fact, it's found in What They Never Told You in History Class by Indo Kimmy Kush. Mm-hmm. I wonder, oh, is it, when you put down a certain, uh, a certain, uh, certain papers, I wonder if I would just say American. Um, you can say Washington. You say Washington more. Say Washington okay. more. Okay. That's your tribal and your and your um nationality. Because I was talking to a brother of mine, one of the brothers of mine, and he was getting his uh, uh, two teenage children enrolled in school. And he had Moorish American down on there as nationality, and I was I was going along with it because I didn't know any better myself. Right, right. Well, I mean, I mean that's that's what is um, stated, but like I'm gonna tell you what what was said. You know, um, Taj was giving an interview along with um, Sister Yaffa Bay, uh-huh. and both Taj and Sister Yaffa Bay said they don't really know what part in which that was, um, um, which is actually correct within. The 101, because that was actually put together by Charles um, Kirkman Bay after three um, after 1934. Okay. Because originally it was the 102. 
but I, I haven't heard of the 102. Yeah, that's what it was called in um 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 in the Moore's Holy um um the Moore's Holy Temple of Science in 19 to, um 20 on um, 27. Okay, you said you said the Alpha Bay and Tosky Bay was what now? Right, in the interview on Black Talk Radio was what they did. Oh man. Can you hear me? You are kinda of breaking up. I said it was an actual lecture in which that they did on Black Talk Radio. I oh, think okay. It on, yeah, it was on KTL. No the ledge. Okay, so you say uh Yapa Bay was saying that uh uh, yeah, she uh, went as far as saying that Moorish American was not a nationality. Okay. But if they use the word American, then that's a nationality because it's a proper noun. But an adjective cannot be a nationality because okay. it describes a thing, a person, or a place. If you are a person, then you must be described by a noun. You must um um be a noun, not a description yeah. of a noun. Okay, I get it. Right. Okay. Keep that. Yeah, bear that right. in mind. In other words, you must be I am. You can't be like I am. Okay, so she got got kind of correct Taj on that, huh? No, no. She, I mean, she said what she said, and Taj didn't re, um, re, rebuke it. Matter of fact, Taj went on to say that um, all of us is a washer tour. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go and listen to um, um the last interview. Um, on um, KTL, which is here on Block Talk Radio. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's for now on. That's what I put. Watch you talk more. Right. Because I definitely had it wrong. I'm going by, like I said, I'm going by <laughs> that, that you're not black, Negro, or colored, or Ethiopian. You're more Americans, you know. Right. That's where right. I got well, that from. Right. I, I know. I know. I know. And this. And, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with it because Prophet Noble Jali said um, he want all good Americans, you know, to help them in the upliftment of who? Fallen humanity. And that the 14th and 15th um, <clears throat> amendments or so would not be necessary for the salvation of the people. Okay. But he said Americans. Yes, he did. Right. So the, so the American is a nationality. Okay. That's why it's the United States of America. But like I said, America has a superior position, which is Al Morocco, which is the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of Morocco is based on. We have a superior position because we recognize them. They didn't recognize us. Exactly. So when people speak about, oh, we need to get recognized by the United States, uh, no, the United States get recognized by us. Right. And Obama says it clearly within his speech, in which that um, he gave about um, in Egypt about Morocco. Yes, I, I was told that uh, Obama was the one that signed the uh, Declaration uh, of the Rights of Indigenous People. Yeah, he, but they, that, that's never a really announced, a publicly announced. No, but it's the truth. And actually, he he um, he stated in the newspaper article. You know, that the United States has um, reversed their um, decision about the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People and has now signed it. So it ha- it was written, but you're right, it wasn't um, worldwide, you know, announced or nationwide announced because they don't want the people in the, of the nation to know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The real people of this nation, they don't want us to know. And I know that for a fact because... This is all Masonically enshriners, you know, Masonic shriners, white Masonic shriners, in which that is hiding the secrets, or trying to, even though they are getting out every day, and that's what we're able to, you know, come forth with the information that we come forth with, mm-hmm. because there are leaks in their system, loopholes in the system. But I noticed yesterday at uh, during the election, when when they announced that uh, Obama was the winner. Right. Well, everybody was saying that a lot of people were shocked. Oh, yeah. Well, I oh, was. They, they were shocked. They thought they had it in the bag. <laughs> this, 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 this was the most shocking election I ever seen. Because Mick I Romney never, yeah, took, like, he took his time. Shocking. Go ahead. Huh? As, as Mick Romney took his time to, yeah, to, now, uh, to concede, yeah, you know. Yeah, giving the concession speech. 
Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. But it like, I don't know. I, I feel like he should have known, though, that he wasn't chosen. <laughs> uh, remember, uh, this is what we said on one of the last shows. We're talking about the popular votes. They both came out with about 49% each, so it came out almost even. You know, right. I think I think the final account was that Obama won by a few thousand um, projections of votes, just a few thousand. I mean, I mean, it was real close because they both still had forty nine percent. However, when you look at the electoral collegiate vote or college vote, Obama beat him by almost a hundred points. By a landslide. Right by a landslide. So we said that. About 12 states or so control the swing of the votes. And we went over some of those um, states the last time, on one of the last times that we did the um, show, in which that we already projected that Obama's going to win by the landslide. We right. told everybody that. Right. You told me that. Right. Almost a month ago. Thank you. <laughs> now, now, how did I know? <laughs> You know, I don't know how you knew more, but I, I guess you, but you knew. Oh, maybe the Illuminati told me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, had some connection with the Bilderbergs or something. It, it, yeah, yeah. I've been to their meetings. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I'm being facetious for those who are so conspiracy theorists. Mm-hmm. It's called facetious. It's called, uh, 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 that's what it's called, y'all. Okay? Okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's exactly what um is taking place. You know, is that we knew he was gonna win by a landslide on a cut, and I told everybody it was gonna be the um um electoral vote that was gonna put him in. Mm-hmm. I, I said everybody that um Romney might um might come in um um might possibly win the popular vote, just like Al Gore did. Mm-hmm. But the collegiate vote is Obama is gonna whoop that ass by a landslide. I told you about that. But what what really shocked him that he didn't even win a popular vote. Right. He, Big Rocky well, didn't even win a popular vote. That's what shocked him. Right, right. Well he right. Eventually right. By the time it was over, right, Obama won that by a few thousand. You're right. But it was close as hell now. It was forty nine percent, forty nine percent for a long time. It was a narrow margin. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So but that's what I've told everybody who's going to put him in was the um, based on electoral votes. I told everybody that. I knew exactly how it was going to go down and everything. Because once you know this system, then you already know the moves they're going to make. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Once you once you do know this system, you you know about what time it is. Right. With them. You know, uh, you know who like they said they are not really elected; they're selected. Right. Exactly. You got it. Now Obama um is one of the big fat cats for Wall Street. They're not gonna let him go nowhere. <laughs> you know? Um hold on, brother. We getting ready to bring in someone else here. Area okay. code two zero five, area code two zero five. You on peace, the line. Peace. 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 Peace, Dr. Bay. How you doing? Can you hear me? All right. Yes. How you doing uh, today? All right, how y'all brothers doing? We doing, doing good. Fine, sir. Doing fine. Yeah, I've been I've been checking out this um this whole thing here, man, and uh, I was one to kind of clear up a couple of things, and you know I have been studying you know this Morris Science Temple and a lot of other information I've been going hold to, you know. Uh, I see the cat the cat bite out the bag, man. And, you know, as soon as these brothers and sisters wake up, man, we could we can you know take our rightful place in this in this in this in in America, if I should say that. But uh, what I'm trying to understand is, like, the brother, um, I forget his name, your, your guest there. Uh, brother L. L. Yeah, yeah, Brother L. Yeah, um, it seems like like I'm trying to, I'm finding a hard time on what, like you said, what should we call ourselves? You know, it seems like, you know, everybody wants an absolute name to be, you know, to be right when I think we are all of that. You understand? Right. But, Right, you and know. we are, and we are. So that's no that's no problem about that. We are everything. We are Kishite. We are biblically known as the Moabite. We are historically right. known as the Moroccan. We are um, 
you know, descriptionally, description wise, known as Moorish American. You know, so I mean, we are all of that. You know, but the right. thing is, is to narrow it down so that it can be based upon a culture, because any culture that you know of had a specific name in history in which that they went by, in which that they became historically known as, you know, and they had customs, they had traditions, they had rituals, they had um, ceremonies, you know, they had rites of passage. They had all of these things in which that would help the people be able to project themselves into the future, you know, on something in which that was relevant, that was truthful, that was righteous, you know. So, um... That's why we speak about the fact that we're Washington. Because when you look up the word when you look up the word Washington, you'll find the ancient comedic connection, which Egypt is um where we find the oldest um historical information as far as the Metonetter, as far as the particular books, um information, mm-hmm. you know, as far as um our history, as far as our um the know thyself, you know. Right. All of this information has come from out of the interior of Africa. You know, right. so the word washator goes back to the word washet, or the word um, usheta, which means the epitome of enlightenment. Who don't want to be known by a name in which that means the epitome of enlightenment? Hey. That, hey. Is, the top, <laughs> that, is, that is the top portion of the caduceus, or the uraeus. When you see the wings with right. the ball upon the pole, right. Right, the pole symbolizes the spinal column. The ball on top of the pole symbolizes the pineal gland, and the wing symbolizes the expansion of the mind, the activation of the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. Wow. That top portion is called atom. That's sun disk, which is that ball. But the right. wing coming from it is the wings of Mayat, in which that symbolizes freedom. Wow. The whole symbol itself symbolizes the soul principle. It's a symbol mm. of the rule. I'm right? still learning. Simple of Heru. Atan is nothing more than Heru. So when wow. so when Akanten supposedly changed his name from Amen um Hotep the fourth to Ak um Ankanten, which means the source of life of Atan or the source of life of the sun, and he changed his name, that was in the image of Heru. That's what people are not telling um other people. So he didn't wow. um supposedly destroy the um um the Amen Ra cult. You know what I'm saying? Because Amin Ra is a form of Heru too. Wow. But, but he was showing you that it was based on the soul principle, which is in, at, which is the soul is inside of the pineal gland. That Kari is a French philosopher stated this years ago that the seat of the soul is in the pineal gland. The Bible mm-hmm. itself speaks about it in Genesis the thirty second, thirty third chapter, where it speaks about specifically that. Um, <coughs> That um, Jacob was wrestling with the angel, and the angel hit him in the hollow of his thigh. And um, the angel gave him the name Israel, which means to ascend to God. And that from that period, when he ascended to God, he seen God face to face, and he named the land Pineal Land, or Pineal Land. Pineal, right, right. And that's the name in which that it became known as. So he talking about that he activated his kundalini energy from the hollow part, the hollow of his thigh, which is his lower nature, raised it up, ascended into God, which is along the, um, the digid, which is the spinal column, the backbone of Osiris, into the heavens, the seventh heaven, where he seen God face to face. This is the same story told by Mo, by um, by Muhammad, um, later on during the night of power, as we said earlier, when he took um the El um Maraj. And he actually went up into on a on a beast called the Baruch into the seven heavens to see God face to face. But the Baruch is nothing more than the Kundalini energy. The word Baruch means white lightning, and the Kundalini, okay. when it goes up the spinal column, is actually a mercurish white color, a silvery white color. Wow! So all of this is symbolic. This is what we are talking about. And this is why we have to decode this information so that we can develop a culture around it. But we no longer can be ignorant of what these stories actually mean and where they come from because we know that all of it is based on ancient Egypt. Okay. And if you ever heard the show that we did with um, with Walter Williams, he told you that we are the Egyptians. That's right. That's right. I I remember that show. Yes, I, I remember that show. 
Right. So what was the Egyptians? The Egyptians actually wore the washetan, which is the washita. Mm-hmm. Which means oh, those, who, those who strive to the epitome of enlightenment. They wow, you just tied to it together. Of enlightenment. Wow. You know, so that's why we use the term washita. Okay. You know, because it's an ancient is an ancient word in which that goes back in ancient Kemet for over fifty thousand years. And you can find this in Jeremiah's book called Jeremiah's Lectures and also Ancient Egypt, the Light of the World. Right. And it's no coincidence because the uh, Washington State they was here in America over a hundred thousand years. Would that be the Washington more um that's um that's led by what's her name? D. Dajamanga, if I'm pronouncing right. it right. Uh, right, that's the Washington uh, Empress. by Empress, right. Um her highness Empress, um, um Bertiasi, Tierra, um, Turnica, Washington, Gaston L. Bay. Okay, got you. I got you. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Oh, man. You get you. Now, 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 I come in here and said absolute. Now, you just broke it all the way down to absolute. Yes, sir. Okay. He did. And, and, yes, sir. And that's, but that's the point. That's that's what we do here. So, okay. now we know that the image of the Caduceus was for the healers. All of the okay. healers, all the, of course, because you'll find that symbol in the third dynasty up under Dozer, or Zozer, who was actually um, the prime visor. His prime visor was known as Imhotep. Right, the story, right. I, I, the, right, the story of Jesus is based on Imhotep from the third dynasty of, of Egypt, of ancient Kemet, of Tamaray. Uh, uh, wow. Of wow. Jesus being the healer. That came from Im, the story of Imhotep. Wow. We're now moving into the, um, the 13th um, zodiac sign is now moving in between Scorpio and Sagittarius right now, and is known as Officius. But guess what? It's the ancient Egyptian name for it. It's Imhotep. Are and he's you known serious? As the, yes, it's Imhotep, and he's known as the serpent wrestler. So that means that Imhotep is going to awaken the Kundalini in us as the divine healers of this planet. So the name Washita correlates right along with the goddamn story. Wow, <laughs> man. <laughs> So, so it's about to go down. It's going down. It's, yes, it's going sir. down now. That's the reason why all wow. this information is out now. Like I said, I'm wow. still learning. I'm still learning. I'm, 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 I'm right along with you there, Brother L. Well, <laughs> I, I won't hold up your time now. You just cleared up a couple of things for, for oh, me up, there. If you, and... got more, if you got more, come continue with it, Brother. We, um, right now, you and Brother L are the ones in which that is um, on here asking the questions. Let's get to them. That, that's right. Uh, you got two more me minutes. Ask, let me ask you this then. Okay, then. From our point here, you know, in America, and you just tied it back to Africa. So, right. Okay, like Brother L was saying once before about claiming our nationality, do we claim our nationality, like, you no, know, not to go back over it again, as America or Africa? Well, you said it once before, though, but. Well, we have, dual, we have Let me explain. We have dual citizenship. We are Washington Moors okay. in America. America is the dual citizenship of of us being here. Okay. The United States, however, is not um, what we are part of. We're not U.S. citizens, and we will never be because, based on the Dred Scott case decision of eighteen fifty six, eighteen fifty seven, Judge Taney ruled that we are not U.S. citizens, nor will we ever be. Okay. Okay? So we're not U.S. citizens. So that means the only category left, if it's the United States of America, is what? The, the, hmm. the Washington Moors? Is America. Is America, right. Now, we now our, pro, now our primary citizenship is Washington Moor. Our dual okay. citizenship is America. Got you. I got you. Just like you that's said, why, that's why we're called United States of America. Right. That means we're a separate, we're a separate entity from the United States. You got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 And based on the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, we have the right to self-government and self-autonomy. We have the right, Article Six states that we have the right to um to a nationality. Oh man. We have the right so, uh, to to our indigenous name. That we have within oh. our communities and our nation. Okay. We have the right to do like, all of these things. 
because just like you were saying a minute ago, when the president went to Al Humbra and signed that 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 new bill, he was saying that we have the right to claim our indigenous status, right? Or exactly. nationality, right? Exactly. Okay then. Okay. So let me ask you this: Well, is is, is it how do you go about doing that? Do you have to enter a, a memorial sign temple to to claim no. your nationality? You no. Know. No, let me explain. All right. Mm-hmm. There's various factions of the Moral Science Temple of America because after the death of Prophet Ali, July the 20th, 1929, there was a great right. schism in which that occurred. You had about four people or more actually jacking for the position or the seat of Prophet Ali. The primary okay. candidate was Charles Kirkman Bay. Okay. He's the one Heard who of him. Right, he's the one who was jocking the hardest, and he went to go form his own Morris Science Temple of America, incorporated with his own new laws and regulations. Oh, no, Okay. But that was not the that was not the original 1929, um, or oh, 1928 Morris Science Temple of America. That oh, was man. the incorporation, and guess what? They are the largest in the nation. Okay. Two, with nearly 200 temples. Wow. So, even when you go to those temples, you're not actually getting the real information. No. Because they fall up on the 5013. <coughs> they incorporated. Right. They incorporated, even though it happened in 1934, by the, not, by the time of 1960s, with Lyndon B. Johnson, they ended up making most of those temples a 501c3 status, which means that they are federally federalized, and which that means that they do not have any civic or political ties whatsoever. They can't speak on this information that we're talking about. So they can't acknowledge the land. They can't acknowledge the actual land ties. So hence, if you don't have any land ties, then you don't have a nationality. Oh, man. What is a temple? (laughs) A temple is is nothing more than a building in which that teach religious instruction. That's all. True, true. Well, that's what so, they so, teach. So, they, 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 so they're they, primarily a religious corporation um, now. That's what the they government. are. The no, government. no, they, no, they're not a government. Okay. They don't even okay. follow ecclesiastical or theocratic, um, a, a theocratic government. They don't even they, they don't get political. Period. What they oh, do, um, 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 brother L, tell them what they do up in there. Don't they do a little bit of singing? They do a little bit of uh, thinking. They do a little bit of uh, all they do is take you around in circles. They teach you why Asiatics are the way they are. We already know why Asiatics are uh, why we are the way we are, but they never give you a remedy. They never try. They don't. They don't give you no processing papers to go to get it notarized or go to the uh, county recorder's office or to the county courts. They don't give you that. Right. They don't even because talk about that. Right. Because they say that so, they're uh, mm-hmm, go ahead. so they're not teaching what you're teaching. No, no. Oh man, they teach you how they teach you how to sing the Prophet Noble Drali. That's it. They teaching you to say the prayers to Prophet Noble Drali. They teach you the one on one. They are teaching you the Holy Quran Circle Seven. They are teaching you the Morris literature, and they might be teaching you the oral um, prophecies and statements of Prophet Noble Drali. That's about it. That's it. And as but far not as their death, science. No, they don't teach this science. As far as their death chamber, you might not even get in that. It might even take you two years to get a nationality card, which is nothing more than a um, piece of paper in which that has your name written on it. That's all. Wow. Well, I tell you, you know, it's almost like every other uh, organization that's been, what you, if I could say, infiltrated, you know, to keep, you know the the melanated man at bay, so to speak, keeping you right it. where he's right where he's at. Right, and you and know, that was uh, the truth of the matter. Um, Brother Taj and Sister Yaffa breaks that down very um, eloquently when they speak about the infiltration um, of the Moral Science Temple and Charles Kirkman Bay, um, who was amazing. Um, actually, um, that is where that infiltration comes from, as far as them being the largest and yet don't have no civic instruction. Matter of fact. By them forming the Morris, um, Sci- uh, the Morris Science Temple of America Incorporated, 
1934, they had to drop the civic side, which is the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. Wow. Because they, no, they no longer was, because they no longer could teach it, because they just became primarily a religious organization. That's all. Now, that's Charles Kirkman Bay. Then you had another one by the name of John Givens Ill, in which that, wow. um, in which that you had the Dingle brothers who came from out of that, Richardson, um, Dingle, and, um, and what's the other's name? Richardson Dingle, and I can't remember the other Dingle brother right now. It's going to come back okay. to you in a second. But the I'm going to listen brother, to your other show. You, 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 you went right, in Timothy, deep with that Timothy, last show. Right, Timothy Dingle. You had Timothy Dingle and you had Richardson Dingle. And both of them okay. brothers, thank you, baby. And you had both of them brothers um, um, who formed, one formed the Resurrection, um, more Science Temple of America, and one formed the Reform, more Science Temple of America. Okay. All right. Wow. And that and that came after, because John Given Ill wasn't using the Morris Science Temple of America. He was using the Morris Holy Temple of Science. He was still teaching mm-hmm. civics. Mm-hmm. And so, oh. within the Reform and within the Resurrection Temples by the Dingle Brothers, they was also teaching civics. Matter of fact, they even had a law school in which that um um in which that they put in which that was put together. I think it was up on the Brother Richardson, um Dingle. But guess what? Them two brothers had beef with each other. The two brothers? Yeah, the two brothers wow. had beef. That's that's why they that's why they formed their own temples. Wow. Wow. Man. So <laughs> now you have off, now you have offshoots of that temple of those temples through those two brothers. I think it's about three of them or so. Offshoots of offshoots. Right. Now you go back now there was another one who was jacking for a position. And who actually had the real position? Actually, it was um, Supreme Grand Sheik Edward Milley Ill. He actually was put through their death chamber. He actually was given the title Supreme Grand Sheik by Prophet Nobudrali, and he actually was in, um, actually second in command to Prophet Nobudrali. Okay. And what happened was that Charles Kirkman Bay and his group threatened him so bad that he died within a year of the formation. Of um, um um I think he died in 1935. So he died early hmm. from all the for all the nonsense which that was going on. He could have been killed. They don't know. Hmm. They said that he died on an airplane trip back from, um on, on an airplane um business trip, hmm. and that all his property was turned over to his wife. Um 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 Dila, um D um um Dila D um Delia, and Delia. Had a man by the name of William Morris L. In which that she tried to put in position, you know what I'm saying, as the Supreme Grand Sheik, but the own members did not want William Morris L. as the Supreme Grand Sheik, and they, um, um, a lot of the members soon left the temple. And guess what? The only temple that he left after the Great Schism was Temple One in Chicago. Mm. Now, that was her lover. So we don't know if she um 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 the treachery in which that she played a part in. That's right. And then there was another person that was jockeying, and that was David Ford L, who actually was given um the um the supreme um chairman position, the supreme grand chairman position, until Prophet Noble Jali uh, went through his um trials and tribulations as far as um you know getting indicted and everything as he was out um out of jail for the death <coughs> of um. Paul Green Bay. Right. Paul Green Bay calls himself trying to take over um, the Moore Science Temple of America, and he ends up shot and stabbed <laughs> okay. behind, behind Unity Hall. I, re- I remember that from last show. That's right. Right. So, so, so you had a lot of people. You had Ira Johnson Bay who was jacking for a position. You had Aaron um, L. Um, Payne L, who was jacking for a position. You had a lot of people who was jacking for a position, brother. So many, um, so many that um, that you would have to think that it was conspiracy. <clears throat> wow. And and so in so many words, the prophet never really appointed someone to 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 take over <clears throat> yeah. before he deceased. Yes, yes, he appointed. He appointed. Um, Supreme Grand Sheik Edward Milley Ill. However, Ill, okay. 
Right. However, Edward Mitty Ill was getting so many threats from okay. Charles Kirkman Bates, so he just you no, know, he just started laying low. Huh. Oh, so by the man. time so by the time that um Claude Green um um got murdered and Noble Dry Lee went to jail for about two weeks or so and, and within jail they say he got beat up, you know, um and then he ended oh. up catching pneumonia. Right. I heard that. Right. And then he died July the twentieth, nineteen twenty nine. Mm-hmm. You know? Man. So that's what happened. So I mean if you so I mean that's the history in which that they have been dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Right. They can't, right. They, they can't even treat themselves right. Okay. When the first okay. chapter of the Holy Quran Circle Seven says to know thyself. Well, I don't want to know thyself if 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 you're dealing with them type of with that damn type of low <laughs> self energy. Right. Hey bro, right. hey bro, you ain't kidding. No way. You ain't I kidding. mean, them niggas was damn stabbing and killing each other and murdering each other at a heartbeat. Oh man, Jackson man. Ira Johnson Power. Bay, look, Ira Johnson Bay had a thousand goddamn policemen and cars outside of his house when he kidnapped Charles Kirkman Bay. Oh man. And they had a shootout. And damn, um, 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 two cops got murdered, and one of the murders got pinned on Ira Johnson Bay, and he went to prison. He became known as Allah L, and he started his own little um movement in there. Hey, the, hey, the prophet was surrounded by gangsters, wasn't he? Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Man, it, and it's he, a wonder. Is it, 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 so much disarray all the way up until this day? It seems like, from exactly. from my point on the outside looking in, so to speak, if I could say that. Right. Exactly. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. So well, so I mean so if you want to go into the temple, brother. Um, as Brother L told you, um, I advise you not to. You're not going to learn any of this information. However, um, I am a grand sheik of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, in which that I teach all this information. We can teach we ourselves. We can teach civics and politics and law because guess what? We're not up on the 501c3. Okay, got you. So the, right. So the state can't revoke my um, tax exemption. Okay. Well, I'm, because I'm that's, what they, that's what they're afraid of if they come out publicly is that their tax exemption would be revoked to them. And that ain't worth two pennies. Right. No, sir. You know, when you're dealing with when, when you're dealing with people's souls and livelihood, you understand, you know, you worrying about being tax exempt and you know, and like like you said on, on a previous show that, you know, they they probably got the government got their hand in a lot of pocket. That's why they're not Given the, the the true science of what we should be learning, right? Hold, you know, uh, hold on, brother. We get ready to go to the another caller eight four eight area code eight four eight on the air. Peace, peace, peace. It's a long guy. How you doing, brother? So we doing good. I, how you? Uh, as well. I'm here with B now. in my earth. Be like uh, three moors with one generator. It's, it's, it's going down. In the storm. Oh, right. So man. We, we ain't got no power. We, right. we got a light, though. Right, um, right. I want, you to, I want you to speak a little bit about the importance of declaring your status. Right. Well, the word status basically um, implies that there's a class system in which that's been played against us. I know I've been hearing all my life that we're minorities, I know I've been hearing all my life that we're second class citizens. Where are they getting their classification and their status from? Where is this arriving from? Well, according to the Constitution, Article 1, Section 2, it states that we're a three-fifth person, which means a subhuman, a monster, a beast, cattle or chattel property, a gohim, as the Jews refer to us as the Gentile. In other words, we're only motivated from the lower self, the genitals. So, the stat actually... That status actually is based on us moving up the chakras, the kundalini moving up through the concessions of the chakras beyond the four devils, which are the four lower chakras, into the three immortal bodies, the Aku, the Ba, and the Ka. That's how you actually gain physical status, which is based on your spiritual status, and which that makes you five-fifths or whole being once again. 
on paper, that has to be expressed in the form of an affidavit. An affidavit is powerful based on the, maxim, the maxims of law, in which that anyone who disagrees with your affidavit, within 30 days, they have to rebut it point for point. Mm-hmm. If they can't rebut it point for point, then it stands as truth in any court of law throughout the whole nation, in all 50 states, in all the um, hundreds and thousands of counties. So when they try to bring you to court, you whip out your affidavit, or either you send it prior to you going to court, in which that shows that your affidavit of nationality is based on a status change, that you're not Negro, Black, and colored, that you're not three-fifth person, you're, um, that you're not civilist more twos, but you're in full life, a five-fifth person, a whole being. Mm. So this is the signs of a nationality and status. Matter of fact, nationality deals with your political status. So you have to deal with civics in order to have a nationality. How are you going to say that's why they had to change um, um, the word from more American to Moorish American? Because they no longer utilized in 1934 when the Charles Kirkman Bay, they no longer utilized the political or civics um, side of law in the, um, in the Moorish um, um, science temple of America. But if you look up the definition of black um in Black Law Dictionary of nationality, it says political status. If you're dealing with politics, then you must be dealing with law. You must be dealing with civics. Mm-hmm. That's where the Moorish Holy Temple of Science comes in at. Mm. So this is the trick in which they've been played on us. And this is the infiltration in which that has occurred from these agents and these um um, Masonic and invo- um, um, provocateurs. Who just been simply making money off the backs of the people, putting them back into slavery up under the damn 501 um, 3 um, 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 federal lie. It's no different than a nigga living on a, um, on, on a plantation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So this is this is what's going on as far as the status um thing. I think that God, because that's the most important thing that um people need to know is how to declare the nationality. Right, and how you declare it? Because if not, they're going to be out of place. Yes, sir. Right, you will. have to declare it by way of an affidavit. It has to be an affidavit of nationality, in which that you specifically state that you're not a three fifth person. That according to the Dress Scott case. Decision of 1856, 1857, that you are not a U.S. citizen, nor will you ever be, and that the United States is a corporation, or that the United States is of America, and America has the superior position because America is the um, hidden name actually for Al Morocco, and this is the actual um, um, former empire known as the Moroccan Empire slash the Empire Washington slash the um um. Um, Kushite Empire slash the Songhai Malian Empire slash the Ultima Empire. All of that is the same damn empire. Wow. Same damn. people. The name is changed in order to conceal the truth behind the real legacy. Wow. Brother, brother, Lean, could you could you run that? What? How you pronounce that drill? What drill shot case? Uh, right. How right. could I find it? Could you could you could you spell it? D R E D Dred Scott S C O T C versus Sanford S A N F O R D Dred Scott versus Sanford. Okay. Mm-hmm. All the lawyers in the country, who's part of the bar, British Accreditation Regency, all of them have to read the Dred Scott case decision, and they all know the Dred Scott case decision still holds weight. My wife and I've been in court cases where we um said. The Dress Scott Casey's um, decision and 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 these white people back the hell up off us. Wow. Because they know that we're not US citizens. Matter of fact, when we were getting ready to get our passports, we um, my wife told the lady said, You know we're not US citizens and she said, Yes, we know. But you need this passport, don't you? <laughs> uh, peace, Aileen. Yes. If I if I could point and um once you even put it on the record, your nationality, they will still um, hold up that as if you... Oh, yeah, they will still hold up the facade. I, I, I've been in there um, 
he not been in their in, in their um colorful court. Right. He, he try, they don't know what you're talking about. However, once you have the colors hand on your square and you and you and you kick it to them all the way live and you know what you're talking about, there's nothing that they can do, regardless of what type of act that they put up. They try to act like what you're talking about. Yep. They cannot proceed whatsoever they can't proceed. because this, this is this is law. Yep. This it's is real law. It's constitutional law. Right. And right. there's nothing that they can do with it. Right. It's not policies, codes, rules, regulations, ordinances, or statutes. Exactly. It's not colorable law. All of that shit is colorable. The only real law is constitutional law and common sense law. In which that correlates to natural and universal law. That's the only real law there is. Everything else is colorable. And any time that a um, government or another man said they got ownership or control over another person, they insane. Mm. And you have to ask them what jurisdiction do you have in order to prove that shit. <laughs> wow. You got to have subject matter and you got to have persona. In other words, you got if you don't got person matter. In other words, you got to show me how you can how you have control over my person. Because the only reason why I'm in this court is because of threat, or arrest, and coercion. Mm-hmm. And you better have read my special appearance or restricted appearance in order to in order to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. Wow. And in subject matter, you don't have subject matter because I just told you that according based on the Dress Scott case decision, I'm not a U.S. citizen, nor will I ever be. Prove to me where I have become one. And if you say the 14th Amendment, then I'm sorry, but the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. No, sir. It was brought before 21 states, and 15 of the 21 states at the time denied it. Yes, and, then it never brought, and then it was never brought before the other 29 states. And that's solid. Yeah. And so guess what? Every time you say that, and when you go to court, you always have to say, when they ask you, well, do you understand the charges being brought up against you? You say, hell no. You say emphatically no. I told him. No. Right. You have to say emphatically no. You cannot say that you understand, overstand, understand, or stand. You can't say that. I don't, no, I, don't stand under, I don't stand under it. Right. Gotcha. No, you do not understand because according to Dress Guy case, you're not a U.S. citizen. <coughs> Nor would you ever. The 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. So therefore, I'm not a U.S. citizen. Prove to me in this court of law, the prosecution, who is playing the damn state, who's playing the goddamn we the people, all three of the goddamn different positions at one time, prove to me that I'm a goddamn U.S. citizen. So they're banking on you to play the fool and go along with the program. And if you do, guess what? You are liable liable for the bond in which is attached to the violation or the statute in which they claim that you violated or you broke. Wow. Absolutely. So therefore, you have to pay them with your body or with the money, which is the fiat notes in your pocket. (laughs) I owe you. And so... Read you loud and, they, clear. and they want and they want to get you under their jurisdiction because the thing that when I came up there, came in with your persona suit and kept trying to get me to claim that straw, and he even threatened me. He said if you were ever at once known by this name, you know, and, and you're commit, you know what I'm saying this and that, uh, this and that. I, now, actually, I see you, you threatened me. I'm my proper person. He, he tried to threaten me. He said, "Yeah, I heard about people trying to do this tactic before. I'll talk you and use words, very words, in order to get you under their jurisdiction." Yep. And that's why silence is golden. Once you say what you have to say, you don't because it's all placed on the record. Yep. Yeah. They cannot violate that because if they do, they're violating a treaty, they're violating international law, and they're subject to the penalty, which they know because they swore an oath to obtain it. Right. Wow. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So this, so so this, this is what's going on here. You know. So, um. 
we get ready to um, end the show. We appreciate you all for coming on. Okay. So mm-hmm. adding to the show, the flavor to it, um, which I've been dropping in and, and adding on. You know, okay. we've been going before in. Before we leave more, before we leave, excuse me, before we yeah. leave, can I say just, uh, 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 yes, like please. on my uh, paper says, Washington more American? Um, the word more and American are, some, are the same. So okay. you can use either or. Remember, okay. Washington more is your tribal and your nationality. The word more is a proper noun. Okay. Gotcha. Right? The word American okay. is a proper noun. But you are Washington more in America. Okay. So you are Washington more in Al Morocco. Yeah. Okay. America is Al Morocco. So you don't have to say um, that you are a more twice. In a sense. Okay. And the word American, like you said, is your duality. That's that's what you that that is your duality. That's that's what you are. You are a Washington Moore, but your duality is American because you're not a U.S. citizen. Is it different? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. Doctor. First World Order Radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works.